Good morning, I'm Audrey Huey. Most of you know me. Um, uh, raise your hand if you don't know me. Oh, really? <laughs> well, we just talked. <laughs> so, um, I do write fiction, but I am known for my planners. One day that might get switched a little bit. You know, that's what we're all hoping for. Um, I created the um, Ultimate Authorship Planner and the 2024 or the Yearly Authors Planner because I had so much going on in my life. I was um, a mom with very young children. I was freelancing with local magazines, doing copywriting for income. And I was also taking my bachelor's and my master's double time because I had a GI Bill. So it was time, not money. And I did not, I was at a place where I did not want writing to fall out of my life again like it had when I was in the military. Right. So I had to have a plan. I had to have something. I kept buying pretty planners. I would start them, and then I wouldn't use them. And um, the really pretty ones, I'd be like, this is too pretty for me to mess up with a false start. So they, you know, I kept building this collection of planners and journals, and, and nothing was writing focused at the time except the actual just writing journals. So I created what I needed. I needed something that kept my writing on point and also allowed me, when I was ready, to include my marketing plans. And so that way it's a whole life planner and business writing planner all in one. Um, because otherwise, I often had little notebooks. I'll write my story ideas in this notebook. Where did it go? <laughs> and so, you know, you randomly find years later these little notebooks stashed all around the house with story ideas, half full. So. I actually put a story idea corral in the planner so that it could be easy for me to, me to find. And I have a whole shelf of my planners year after year. So if I'm ever like, oh, what do I want to write about now? Nothing seems appealing. I just go pull my planners, go to my story idea sections, which are always full. And I say, oh, yeah, that sounded really fun. Let me do that. So it's, it's kind of nice also having a record. Um, does anybody off the bat have any questions about the planner? No? <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. Just have a feel it again. Yeah, yeah. You know, it can seem overwhelming at first, but the way I set this up, even though it's chunky, it's 2.6 pounds. Um, I know, right? So don't let me bring home 10 of these, please. <laughs> that's a lot. Um, so anyway. I set it up so that it's like being guided through step by step. As long as you take it line by line, it's like I'm right there holding your hand. I'm right there with you, taking you through this process of building a plan that works for you. And I made it very flexible. I state that in the planner that you can use what works for you and ignore what doesn't. And I have um, some of my yearly planner users, they actually put big stickers in the pages that they don't use. So it's not wasted space. Um, we have habit trackers. Some people like glue in different habit trackers that they want. Not a lot of people use the submission stuff, but I had enough um, best sellers come to me and say, I need this. I need the submission tracker because some of them actually use it for tracking awards, for example. They, they submit their books for awards, whether it's cover, contests, or actual um, you know, craft, uh, genre contests and awards. So I wanted to go through this with you. Does anybody want to hold a copy? Or, or should I pass this around so you guys can see it? Who doesn't have it here? There's one. And we'll get the pretty purple. Yes. Thank you, Nikki. There. So share these around. I'll take one. Yeah. Just to borrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, as we go through, oh, well, let me use this one. <laughs> pass them around. Make sure you, as you look through them, um, glance through them, pass them around, try to share. There. Oh. There we go, Nikki. <laughs> and it's all tabbed out and pretty. So. We have a preface, we have an introduction in this planner, which a lot of people don't read that stuff, and that's okay. I did write a nice little letter to you guys, but um, the most important thing we have to start with is our vision. If we understand where we want to go, we can build a meaningful plan. 
So if you open to the vision page, that's page one, of course, um, and our work starts on this page. So I do like the idea of incorporating it like a workbook. So this isn't uh, the typical, I would say, what's called a low content book. It's like a workbook guiding you through building your writing life. So, thank you, Nikki. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so, um, when you're building this, it's really helpful to, what I found that helps people the most is visualizing being at the end of the coming year, or if you have the non-dated version, which is the ultimate authorship planner, um, at the end of 12 months saying, you know, imagine yourself at that point, who you're with, what you're feeling, incorporate the five senses, like I know you all know how to do. And but really put yourself in that space and think about what you want to look back on as your most meaningful um, and pride-filled accomplishment. What did you do that brought meaning to your life? What did you do that helped you leap forward in what you want from your life, especially as a writer? Because if you're here, you're a writer, right? <laughs> so, so think about that. Um, and that's why I include it in the Kickstart Guide as well, or the Quick Start Guide. Quick Start, Kick Start. Kick Start my planner. Um, and it's after you go through this, I give you space to really lay out, um, lay out your ultimate vision, what you're going to be most proud of, but then think about what you want your authorship to look like in the coming year. Because if you do the same thing, you get the same thing, right? So we have to do something different if we want a different year. So what can you do, even just a little bit differently, that's going to make that change you're looking for? Is anybody hoping next year will be better? Right? OK, so we're clear there. So what can change about your daily life or your ideal week or what problems can you foresee? Because some of the challenges we can foresee, I learned real quick with lots of kids that spring break and summer, summer break, I have to have a different plan because I can't, it's, it's just not the same as it is during the school year. Um, I work with several authors who are caregivers for elderly um, family members. They have to have an adjustable, flexible plan. And for them, one thing that's helped a lot is setting priorities and setting boundaries. How can we set boundaries that um, allow us to be flexible when it's super important, but also safeguard some time to make sure that we're not stagnating and losing that last piece of ourself um, and our creative souls that is so important to our life. So balancing those two. Um, balance, I think, is a, a mythical word, but, <laughs> but you guys understand the uh, a concept here. So one thing I like to talk about, you'll find on the next page, is page five, is the four top priorities, four most important areas of your life. Number one is always self because you cannot put, you cannot help someone else without putting on your own oxygen mask first. So yourself. Next is typically your family. Um, does anybody here not have family? Okay, okay, clear. So next, usually I like to say it's writing, but if you have a day job that keeps the lights on, you know, that's, that's pretty important, especially if it pays for covers. Does anybody else hoard covers? Okay, good. I'm not alone. <laughs> I love covers. So, um, and then, so usually it's like some combination of work or whatever you do to generate income and your writing and those top four areas. And so what this helps you do, um, something I've been talking about lately, is it helps you when you do have life throw curveballs at you, it's a lot easier to say, okay, here's my priority in life. What can fall away? Okay, if something's affecting your health, stop, focus on your health because you're not going to write books if you're in the hospital. I've tried, I've tried, okay? It doesn't actually work out. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, family, if something's wrong with my kids, I know, guess what? Yes, this is supposed to be my writing time, but if I have to drop things, 
That's because it's really meaningful. It's really important for me to have good, healthy relationships with my children and show them that they're a priority to me. Um, thank you. Does anybody else want to take a gander? No? OK. Everybody's got OK. Thank you. So anyway, so helping, having that priority list can help you um, when life gets crazy. Control the chaos. Do not let the chaos control you. And it sounds simplistic, but if you use prioritiz prioritization, it really helps you be flexible and adapt to changing situations. I've got lots of practice. so. Um, and I do give you space beneath that to um, write out, uh, start getting into numbers. How many manuscripts do you want to draft this year? How many do you want to publish? You know, how many books do you want to sell this year? Or how many free downloads do you want to give away to get people into your series? So start thinking about those numbers. When it comes to manuscripts, I typically have like a side list of titles that I want to um, finish or working titles, and then I help them up. But it's a good little space to start thinking about what you want to do. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask a question. So I, I have not published yet, and I was wondering like how you would suggest somebody who hasn't published to approach. I would numbers. say either get pretty colors that you like and cross out everything that just doesn't apply okay. to you. Or stickers. Like, get stickers. I've got lots of the, the cute, um, what's that cat, that pushing, pushing. I've got lots of pushing stickers that I put over things that don't apply to me. So that way you can hyper focus. Because when you're more focused, you know, you don't get, don't get sidetracked by all the squirrels and the bunnies, okay? So, um, and that's really important to start thinking about those numbers because then you can go to defining your goals. And what we do is we actually put our top three goals at the bottom and reverse engineer them. Step one through step five, six, five, yeah. So what does it take? What are those five general milestones it's gonna take to get to those end goals? Because it's great and all to write, I wanna sell 10,000 copies, but what does that look like? What kind of marketing and visibility do you need to do to get from where you have been in the previous year to that? Because just saying it is not enough. Saying it is not enough. So this gives you space to start generating ideas, brainstorming, what can I do to sell that 10,000 copies or have the biggest launch of my life or whatever. So next, take those goals and map them out. I love this. Uh, is anyone else here a parent, like with kids still in the house? Yeah. So I make sure that June, July, and August are not heavy writing months. I actually focus on my marketing during those months because that's easier to do. Whereas when I am writing, for me at least, I need to be in that scene. And so it's really jarring to break my concentration. So instead of like putting myself in a situation where I'm going to be upset for interruptions, I actually bat, I, I, I front load that year or I, I put it in the school months to do more writing. That way, if my kids want to interrupt me in the middle of marketing or writing newsletters, <laughs> I'm not mad. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know? so yeah, um, take those goals, take those steps, and insert them in here. Where are they going to go? And what you're going to find is this is almost a practice worksheet right here. Because you're going to start laying things out. And please use friction pens. <laughs> friction pens are life-saving. You're going to start seeing that, oh, you wanted to do these things, but they might bunch up in February. Or they might bunch up in August. How can we move things around so that we can prevent or at least take some measure to prevent burnout and overwhelm. I was just saying, I have my friction pen. This is the yes. best suggestion you ever had. Thank you. You can erase the ink. Yes. Oh. And they also have replaceable cartridges. Yep. So you just get the basic one and then you write in it and then you. Yes. And yeah. they have highlighters. Yes, they do. They have erasable highlighters as what? well. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they have erasable yeah. highlighters too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's so helpful. 
and and, it, and little ones for those who like to write, write in like fine ink, which is me. They yeah. Have little, they have baby ones that have the oh, the fine tips. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Yeah. So, and what's nice about the friction pens too, and having that erasable option, is that it, it helps you adapt to that flexible mindset. If you're already like, you know what, it's okay to move things over, it, it improves your resiliency and your bounce back. Bounce back, I think, is the most important thing I've learned since having kids and, like Sasha said, deciding I was going to write, deciding I was going to publish, deciding I was not ever going to let writing go again. So I had to develop my bounce back. During the day when I'm in the middle of the scene and they wake up from their nap early and I'm like, no. And throughout life when we you know have tragic losses in our lives or the pandemic or um, you know whatever happens job losses building that bounce back is the surest way to still make progress towards your goals even a little bit if you know okay I can stop I know what the most important thing is I need to do and as writers it's the core of our business which is writing right so sometimes you're in writing mode, you know, you know, I just need to get, if I can get 50 words. If I can get 50 words, I'm still honoring that. If I need to let it go because a family member is ill, that's the most important thing. Self, family, writing, something that buys covers, you know, <laughs> some kind of work to buy covers. Um, but yeah, it, it really helps build that bounce back. So those friction pens to me are just a little... A, another little piece of straw in the pile or another another brick in your foundation for a flexible mindset and resiliency so that's my spiel on that um, okay N once you've gone through I actually have on page eight where you can evaluate your goals because the idea during that goal mapping and showing like January through December where you're gonna put everything you're gonna start to say maybe that's too much or wow that's I could do more I could possibly do more um, I don't usually like so this is where I'm against the grain because uh, I just I, don't know, I can't be with the grain just for the sake of being with the grain smart goals specific yes measurable yes but attainable realistic okay if we're always setting the bar really low how far are we ever going to get? You know, push, push, push. And in the Army, they taught us when we're training for our PT test, you run extra. You run beyond what you need to test for. And so when I'm setting my goals and I'm preparing or doing whatever I do, setting goals is part of how I run extra. That is something that has helped me stop playing small. The playing small was part of a mindset issue and setting the right goals that are ambitious enough to tell me to buckle down and get my butt to work, that is a huge part of solving that mindset about playing small. So, And then once you've evaluated your goals, you can refine them, rewrite them. Because emphasis, I think, is important for reiteration and recommitting to what's most important for us most meaningful for our writing lives in the coming year. And then, so that's the good, fun, core work of goal setting there, um, using this planner. I actually take, because I have, along with your goals and your milestones to achieving those goals, I have target completion dates along the side. So TCDs, target completion dates. Can you tell I was in the Army? <laughs> so, yeah. So. I forward fill these into my yearly calendar because you have a whole year and I take month by month and I say okay this needs to go in this month and I put my top goals in there and I use my friction pens so later if I need to move them left or right I can. I think friction needs to be like a sponsorship. <laughs> That'd be great. Send me lots of pens. <laughs> yep. So once you have that great, good goal setting work done, I've done that first because it can help you redefine what you want to put. I have a section for your manuscripts. And if you write a lot in a year, 
you can write out your top five most important manuscripts in this section. And my MVP question, what makes this story special and why is it important? And that, when I have struggled to write, that question is what gets me going again. If I have to look at what makes the story special, I write thrillers with, um, that tackle the issues of human trafficking and missing persons in rural areas. So even though they're really dark, they're really heavy, really hard to write, when I have to answer the, those two questions, what makes the story special, why is it important, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I'm, go I'm gonna go right now. <laughs> it's, not, it's not as hard when you reconnect with what you thought was so great about that story when you first brainstormed. So, yeah. So, is, what was that? Oh, I was saying, you have five in here? That's yeah. perfect because my goal every year is to try to get five books out. That's awesome, awesome, <laughs> yes. And you know, I have, um, one thing that I have when, with this planner is there's a resources page. And when you get the resources page, I give you extra printable pages if you need more manuscripts, if you need more story idea pages. And like I said, one of, um, one of my friends, she's putting together a video right now. I think she did it. She keeps messaging me, but I'm like, girl, I'm in Vegas. <laughs> so, <laughs> come on. Um, but she is putting together how she adds extra pages to her planner for the sections that need, she needs more pages in. So that way, it's not too much if you're not you know, using that many pages, but if you need more, it's easy to do and you can print them off at home and it's eight and a half by 11, so printer sized. So you can also use the uh, Aaron Condren accessories for this one, couldn't you? I, I think so. Yeah. You could wash it too. Yes, yeah. yes, one. absolutely. Because they have little things that you can connect the pages on and hook it to the coil. Oh, that'd be great, yeah. yeah. And, and that's... Like this, right? Yes. Yes, that's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. So what's the weather called? Uh, what was that? What are those called that you can put them? Yeah. They do work. The. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We'll we'll have her hold it up for everybody. Yeah, it might actually still work in there. They're called coil connectors. Coil connectors. Coil connectors. Yay! Make sure they're the thin ones that, that you can, they have an yeah. adhesive strip that you can put on the same thing. Yeah. Have a bit of a seco. Uh, no, they're in Codrin. Amazon's so, yeah. You can add all, all sorts of accessories. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have like a budget planner that's a dry erase. Washington, yes, yes, definitely. That's the cheaper option. Definitely. So, very cool. Oh, I'm all right. And then you get the drawers. Yeah. All right. So, so next, in the next section, we have the editing. So, the next is my editing. And I included this because it was a specific request to help people document an evolving editing process. And if you've edited more than one book, you know how this always changes. So every year, my list is different of words that I overuse. <laughs> yeah, and things I have to look out for. And I, so I keep my editing checklist here of overused words or things that I, um, you know, the things that I'm working on, and it helps me as I'm doing my self-editing uh, before spending all that good money on an awesome editor. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure she can focus on the big things um, so that she's not, you know, distracted by them. But, yeah, and then just kind of going through documenting your process, because if you have to think more about it, you can solidify a process. Building systems in your business as a writing business is a sure way to make better progress. Make progress so that you can focus on the hard stuff like marketing. <laughs> so I know everybody I've talked to is like, the marketing is the thing that they're still trying to nail. So is anybody struggling with marketing in here? Or hoping to get better at it? Getting better at it, yes. Let's keep evolving that in inches, right? So. Um, editing checklist, process, you know, documenting your process. 
Again, I like having this all in one place because otherwise notebooks all over the house. So for those five manuscripts earlier, I have you write them here, but also your genre, your words, your word count, you know, your length. And if you're um, considering different editors, you can write them here and compare their costs, their reputation, reviews. And so you can document your process for evaluating possible editors for your manuscript. So I, I like that. <laughs> so, yeah. And then next on, um, it starts on 26, is my submissions. And this is where I said, just use this space for whatever you're submitting to. If you're guest blogging, if you're submitting to talk on podcasts, which I highly recommend, that's how I got my books into bookstores, even though I was only on Amazon and distributing through them at the time, because um, store managers back home in Michigan heard me talking on podcasts, and they were like, okay, I'm gonna stock it. So my mom took pictures with my book in Barnes & Noble, even though I was not on Ingram Spark. So don't tell me it's not possible. <laughs> you know? Uh, was there a hand? No? OK, good. All right. So uh, but I also have authors who use this. And they do a lot of awards because that's their visibility strategy. So they do a lot of award submissions for their books. Lots of cozy mysteries. And um, look up McKenna Dean. She's amazing. Amazing. And she's an award-winning multiple award-winning um, author. But my contacts, if you have any contacts and you want to keep them all in one space, really old school style, and not just in a box of business cards <laughs> that we bring home from Vegas. Yeah, yeah. So, and then my favorite section is the story ideas. My little story idea corral, bunny corral. And sometimes I use one block and sometimes I use pages to document my story ideas. Um, but that's the great thing about it just being your personal space to write is you can do whatever you want here. But this, again, helps me document and record. I, if I get a chance to write out that story idea, I feel so much better moving forward with what I'm supposed to be working on. So I don't have to stop, start a new Scrivener, and be like, oh, I'm just gonna write a little bit, and then get 25 to 50,000 words in <laughs> on something that I'm you know, not supposed to be prioritizing. So it, it really helps me stay on track and I've kept it in here because it has helped so many other people. At least they told me it did. So I don't think they'd do that if it didn't. All right, next section. Again, this was another request. So when I built this, I built it for me, but I started sharing it with my writing group because I was like, would you guys like this too? Because at the time there was nothing like it. They were writing journals, but not something that incorporated everything. So they asked for a reading list. And I said, OK. Yeah. So you get to document your personal reading list, you know, your, your number one personal reading or, or book list, TBR, for each month. And then I recommend adding a business book, business or craft or whatever you need to do. So you can put that on the business side of things. One each month, um, I think that's pretty doable. Pretty doable. Um, for me, I just do all audiobooks, so housework, oh, God, something to make it bearable, right? So, <laughs> I'm so bad. Um, yeah. So, and then if you like writing out your TBR really pretty and showing, one thing I found is that when I add things to my TBR and I tag those authors in social media, it brightens their day. It brightens their day. My friends love seeing, my friends and then just, Angelina, I think Angela, or it's A. Trevina. I love her. Yeah, I love her stuff. So I always tag her when I put her in my reading list. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, next we have the expense section. So I don't end up filling this out in my planner anymore unless I'm having a big exp expense month. I use QuickBooks, but if you're not accumulating a ton of expenses every month, this could be really helpful for collating things. And you can attach with like a glue stick or washi tape or something, like a little folder to keep your receipts in if you want to. Um, I also, of course, you should be keeping them digitally if you can. But I say keep, keep them all and let the accountant sort them out, you know? <laughs> so that way, um, you know, a little military humor there. Uh, yeah. 
So, but what I like about this, and Karen, Karen told me we should be, and I, I'm gonna change this for next year, and you're gonna have um, a balance at the bottom where you can balance out your income and expenses and have your totals. Um, but I like this section for writing down your expenses because when you have to write it out by hand, we take more time to think about it, and then we say, oh, maybe I shouldn't have bought that you know, extra pre-made cover for that option. <laughs> or, or no, no, that's just me. Um, yeah, so, but it, it is, when you have to write out your expenses and think about them more carefully, you can ingrain in your mind, you know what, I'm not gonna spend money on that thing again because it didn't work or it didn't do what I needed or it wasn't part of my writing priorities. So that's why I really like this section and it's why it's included. All right, any questions? Oh, go ahead. Um, so when I do it, I also put down, I try to not get real room specific. I put down, this is a tool, this is advertising, and then I, for royalties, I just say royalties. Yeah. And then I add them up each month, and at the bottom, this is what she was talking about. I put, okay, how much did I make that month? How much did I spend? And then I also carry over from the previous month after I subtract out to see what I, I my year-to-day profit is, so that at the end of the year I know that. And in, yeah, you can you do it on other tools, but it really does emphasize, yeah. oh my God, I'm spending too much, or I'm buying too many courses, or, um, yeah. <laughs> or uh, whatever. In your particular month, as you're, actually, as you're writing it down, you get that, that feeling. And it's, it's uh, very interesting to say, oh my God, I make, even if it's, you know, $200, oh my God, I made $200 this year, you know, between, yeah. you know, what my book sold and what, or, huh, I'm in the red, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, and the first few years, I was in the red a lot. <laughs> but now I'm, I'm in, in the black, but, you know, there are times where it's like, oh, I didn't really make as much as I thought I should. I yeah. need to, you know, yeah. look at my, what I'm doing. It helps you focus month to month on saying, oh, okay, last month was not good. What can I do to be better this month? Right. Yeah. So it, that's why it, these reviews are so important. So if you go to page 56, or because my section pages don't have page numbers, go to page 57, you'll see Craig Martell's quote here. He gave me a quote for it. <laughs> genre equals marketing. When you just describe your genre, it should appeal to the largest number of readers possible who will like your story. The more you restrict your description, the harder your marketing job will be. That's Greg, yay. Okay, so in this, I kind of give you the basics of marketing. Nothing you probably haven't heard before, but just a little refresher and some reminders. And then I give you space to put down your writing and publishing map. Uh, I didn't want to put writing and editing and publishing, but you know, writing and publishing map. And I kind of map out where what's what phase of the cycle that my books are going to be in in each month. So that way, again, we get an overview of things and we know, oh, well, if, my, if I'm releasing in August, I should probably be doing promotion and getting people more engaged on my socials or whatever you do, getting more people on your newsletter the month before, at least. So planning your releases, what are you doing each month to prepare for your releases? Setting sales targets per series or per title, I give you the space to decide that, and then setting your total revenue goal. I do that after you set your sales targets for your series or your titles, because I want you to think about those series or titles as separate revenue streams, okay? I think that's really helpful, not just saying overall, I want all my books to make this, Think about how it breaks down. What's your best-selling series? What are you going to do this year to increase your sales by, uh, and your revenue by you know, maybe 50% or 100%? What are you going to do? Which series are you going to focus on? Because you can't prioritize them all, you know? Unless you have an army of VAs, okay? Somebody send me an army of clones. Anyway, but the idea is separate them out, treat them like different revenue streams, make assessments, make, you know, set your targets and goals, and then what is that total? What is that total that you want it to be? So, um, let's see here. Fun, fun, fun. 
visibility growth targets? Is anybody trying to incorporate social media as part of their visibility and sales strategy? Yeah, yeah? <laughs> so here, I give you space to you know, cross out what doesn't apply to you, but uh, notate what your current number of followers is on the platform that is important to you. I even include your newsletter subscribers on here because that's important stuff to track and you have charts and stuff, but if you can see, um, you know, your current, set your current and set a target number for the end of the year. Again, this helps you start thinking, start attuning your mind to what can I do to hit my target? You know, not just numbers for the sake of it. Um, it should be meaningful. And, oh, this is one of my favorite pieces. A blog topic uh, brainstorming section. So if you blog, this also applies if you podcast. But I love sitting down and if I get going, I can write out 52 ideas in no time. So one per week. It's super helpful. Um, collaboration opportunities. Is that everyone going to collaborate this year with somebody and help get their stuff out? Newsletter swaps or features or whatever you may do. That is really helpful. So I have a whole page just for that. Get your brain um, revved up for it. And if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. Go ahead. No, 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 sorry. I was just thinking instead of blog or, or I could do Patreon because I'm so yes. bad at it. Yes. <laughs> you could use it for your Patreon too. Yeah, you could use it for, and some people are on Substack, like whatever you want to use it for, just cross out blog and write in something pretty, you know? <laughs> so, and then this is requested. This, I have a social media calendar for the entire year, so month by month, because um, Lindsay Detweiler, also um, LA Detweiler, USA Today bestseller, she requested this. So I was like, whatever you say, Lindsay, you got it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it can, especially if you have different books that you're promoting, and social media is part of your strategy for sales and visibility. You're going to want to make sure that you're not at, you know, a week before release saying, oh, yeah, guys, I got a book coming. You know, <laughs> doing it at the last minute kind of can possibly hurt your sales, I, I think. You know? So once you get past that, you get into the year. And this is a similar calendar format, but this is all about setting up your deadlines, conferences, events. So that way you're not trying to write, you know, 5,000 words during a week of being in Las Vegas, for example. <laughs> so plan it out. Yeah. And then once you get past that, we really just go back into setting at the end of that calendar. Yeah. At the end of that calendar, you get to set your 90 day goals. Has anyone ever done the 90 day challenges for like your progress for goals? Yes. Yes. These are hugely helpful. So I included, because it's so helpful to kind of break things down into 90 days, I've included this here. Refine your 90 days goals, forward fill them into your monthly and weekly calendars. And um, yeah, it, it really, really helps. So then you have each month, you start with a monthly reflection. How did last month go? What lessons and can you carry forward from challenges you experienced? And then goals and priorities. What's your primary focus for the month? And your top three goals, tasks, targets, what have you. Um, what can you do this month that will make you feel most accomplished? So even if you don't have a planner, you're not getting a planner, if you can ask yourself that at the beginning of each month, you're going to set yourself up for success. So uh, what are you reading this month? What training or research do you need to do to hit your goals? Because sometimes it's craft. Sometimes it's marketing. So tasks and target completion dates, because I have to have a little brain dump section for all the things that I need to do. Um, whatever you need to do to set up your releases, whatever you need to do that month to prepare. Um, sales, sales targets, you have a section there. Promotion plan, if you're doing promotions that month. Um, a little space to, for you to write notes on your research. And then it just you have your blogging collaboration plan. A newsletter plan for the month so you can track your um, click through and target uh, or open rates and set your topics. Social media plan for the month and then the monthly overview where you can set out your goals for each week and then forward fill them 
into the weekly sections. I know it sounds tedious, but it helps break things down. And I like it. Yeah, it's, it's not, I know it's not just me, otherwise I wouldn't be up here <laughs> sharing it with you. But once you, you know, the, the month helps you, the monthly overview helps you visualize where things fit. And then you can use your friction pen if things aren't fitting the way you think they do. And then you can say, okay, this is what I'm doing this week. Here's my top priority each day. Here's the number of words I'm going to write or pages to edit. Um, habits I want to track. It's different for everybody. But, you know, setting this up takes 10 minutes at the beginning of the week. Sunday night. Sunday night or Monday morning takes me 10 minutes. And then I have a clear plan of how I'm going to make progress and make my writing life better, make it different each week. Oh, sorry. Um, so you said that excuse me, on Sunday you plan the upcoming yeah. week. Do you have kind of a, a flow for when you go and I, I love the, the yeah. level of information, you know, like the click through rate and all of that. Do you have like a monthly sit down where you yeah. go through and yeah, fill that's, out certain pages as well? Or what is your process of actually? Yeah, so for me, the weekend before, unless the, the week is, you know, the day, the first day of the month falls really weird, like in the middle of the week. But usually the weekend before, because Sundays are my favorite day to plan because it's relaxed, it's slower paced. I like to keep that rhythm. Um, so usually the Sunday before the new month, I'll start filling out my monthly planning, do my reviews, go through and check those open and click through rates, because you've got to give them a little time. You can't check them the same day, you know, for open and click through. But I like to have that as a monthly thing. And one thing I have in here is quarterly reviews, and it gives you a little checklist of things you might want to consider doing quarterly, like you know, taking, all, taking uh, account of all your expenses and income and um, all the little checklists of things to do. So yeah. Any other questions? Because we're short on time. <laughs> we're at zero time. <laughs> Yeah. Does this kind of like follow up on all the stuff? I yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I do have Audrey's planners. You can join even if you don't have a planner. That's fine. Um, if you just want help getting in the rhythm of planning and making, doing the reviews and things like that, um, we had to take a break from posting in the group because we moved websites. So my small but awesome team has been helping me set up a new website. We really had to focus. And now we are, as we come back from Vegas, we're revving everything back up again. We're going to be doing the weekly and monthly um, reviews and goal setting. So. That was Audrey's uh, It's Audrey's Planners on Facebook. Oh. If, you, if you look that up, you'll find it. We also have a Yep, we have Sprints and Spirits. And that's just, if you want to come in and write and do sprints, come join us. So that's just writing focused. Yes. So was it helpful, guys? Was yeah. it helpful? Yeah. I'm so glad. And you can track me down anytime if you have questions or want to talk planning or anything. I love talking to everybody. So.